We'd like now to welcome uh, Professor Joe Har from Dublin City University presenting on education and skills. Uh, so good afternoon everybody, my name is Joe O'Hara and I'm Professor of Education in DCU, the university just up the road from here, so uh, I have a professional interest in this. I'm also the parent of a primary school ch child and a secondary school child, so I have a personal interest as well in the whole area and the whole idea as to how we might think about a role for a municipality or a, or a directly elected mayor within the education and skills space. So what I'd like to do in the next 15 minutes or so is to think through a few things. The first thing is to look at a little bit at the context of where we are in relation to education and education provision in Ireland very briefly. Secondly then is sort of to, to, to conceptualize how we might look at what a mayor could do because there's not a lot of, there's some, but there's not a huge amount of local engagement at a, at a political or a structural or a policy level between educa within education. We have a very centralized system. And then to look at some very practical ways that we might do this thing. So, so three things to look at. So by way of context, because I think it's important and I think it's going to influence the way anybody thinks about education and the role of, of a mayor within education. The first thing we have to say is that we have a really good education system. Now I've got an asterisk at the side because it's not perfect and there are issues and we talk about the issues that are challenging quite a lot. But in terms of the basic core standard of our education system, it's a very, very good one. It's a good one in terms of how we compare ourselves internationally through large-scale educational assessments, and we can question the validity of those if we wish, but they are a measure that's used. And one you might have heard of is PISA, where they tell you what, how we compare internationally by in reading, in mathematics, and in, in, in science. And we do very, very well in those, one of the top in the world in reading, for example. Um, in terms of the people that we have working in our system, we've got a very, very highly qualified teaching cohort across the entire continuum of education. And that's very important too, and it's not necessarily usual either. So the people working within education are very good, which means they're capable of making quite dramatic changes comparatively quickly, but they're also very wary about making very big changes quickly because they think it through their own professional context, their own professional knowledge. We have very good universities, some probably in the top 4 to 5% in the world, and we have a very good linkage in many ways between the education priorities of society, between the social and the economic priorities. So we've, we do a lot of things very well. But a second thing is we have one of the most centralized education systems in the world. And that's really important to think about when we talk about inserting a new entity within the education policy space. Now, there's lots of reasons for this, legislatively, culturally, historically, uh, in terms of service provision. There's loads of reasons for this. I mean, one classic reason is that we effectively have a private education system funded by the state. So 93% of all primary schools, for example, are, are privately owned and funded centrally by the state. Um, and, and that's just, that, that's happened for lots of different reasons. So per, one of the reasons I would suspect that we've got a very strong central structure and a central spine within how we make education decisions is because of the somewhat peculiar type of ownership and governance structure that we have internationally. So when we think about what a mayor might do, it's really important to keep these things in mind. The first thing being, we do a lot of things really well at the moment. But the second thing is that we make an awful lot of decisions centrally with not a huge amount of intervention at a local level, although there are some ways that we'll talk about later on. And context is important because when you look internationally at the way in which mayors are engaged in education, there's a, there's a, there's a continual and a constant interplay between where you are and what you can do. Now, one of the places where mayors, as I'm sure you know yourselves from, from this background, where they've got the most in, input and where they've got the most influence will be in the US. So this, this is a document produced uh, by the mayor, Mayoral Leadership and Involvement in Education is the name of the report from, from the United States um, Mayor's Organization. And they, I won't, I won't read them all, but they list these potential ways that a mayor can actually insert themselves within education. So all the way from convener and manager through to broker and mediator and everything in between. And each of those emerges from a specific cultural, legislative, policy 
and, and, and general uh, societal context. So when we think about what a mayor might be able to do, it's really important to think about where we're coming from, I suppose, is the point we're making. And if we bring it maybe to two specific examples, and I know one you've spoken about already, which is, um, I know I think the mayor of Helsinki was, was with your group in the past, or was with a group. Uh, but if you look at Finland, which for a long time was held up as one of the top education systems in the world and still is, their effectively education outside of the policy, policy sphere is organized, coordinated, and run at a local municipal level. So uh, everything that we think of happening centrally, virtually everything happens locally within a Finnish context. So they distribute funding, they've got curricula that are locally focused, they recruit personnel, and they have quality assurance structures. But they also move outside of that in terms of meals, healthcare, all that sort of stuff. So within a Finnish context and within a, a lot of European countries, the idea of central control of the minutiae of education is completely alien to them. So the, the question is, do we want to move towards that type of structure? Or can we think about how we might move towards that type of structure? And then a second model, which is the one I just referred to earlier on, is the US one. And the US one has a very long tradition of local dominance of a whole range of social policies and education being a, a, a big one and becoming increasingly important over the last number of years. Um, I just took out one from Nashville there, Tennessee, which is the 39th state in terms of educational attainment in the US, and not necessarily the, the top one, but it gives you an idea of maybe how we might think about this. And the sort of things they look at doing there in the US is around looking at literacy outcomes, looking at policy development, looking at maybe aspirational ideas about the best place to teach and the best place to lead, that type of thing. So there's lots of aspirational stuff there. And in addition to that, there's lots of thinking through the way in which you can bring the direct interests and the direct concerns of parents and communities into the education system, which is both positives and negatives. And maybe that's the second thing. One of the, one of the better books ever written in this area is um, it's called The Education Mayor. And it looks at the broad impact of having a highly politicized and a highly engaged directly elected public official responsible for education. And there's both good and bad within that. And in some places, the good outweighs the bad, and, and, and the opposite is in other places. But it's a model to go down, which is a very tightly focused, very engaged, very involved, very active type of mayor. So I suppose there, that's the broad context and ways in which we might think about this. Um, but to me, and thinking about this for the last while, is what exactly is it that a mayor would bring to an education? And, and that's the question I think that we need to ask. What's the added value? So if we've got a fairly good education system, which we probably have, and if it's very centrally controlled, how, how do, what do we do that inserts a directly elected official went into that or a structure went into that, within that? And how do we think that through? And I think that's the key thing. When you look internationally at the most effective systems, or when you look internationally about the systems where there's most satisfaction in terms of local involvement uh, in a policy mediation space, there's an idea of a structure and the idea of a voice. So particularly if you look at Eastern and Central Europe, there's a lot of very focused and very connected type of policy spaces where you have um, you have, just popping to the bottom there, things like mayoral commissions or standing committees or if we wanted to do a Dublin education network. But there's a structure there that gives a voice. And I think thinking about that structure and thinking about the way in which you might create that structure is an important aspect of thinking about how a mayor might get involved within this. And what could it do? Well, they could coordinate, enhance, disrupt, inspire, anything you want to think of in that way. But it is important to think through, well, if you're going to insert a mayor into this system, how exactly do you think they might impact on it and obviously impact on it positively? So what I'd like to take for the next few minutes then are some areas where I think you might see a positive intervention or you might see an intervention. The first one, and in some ways the simplest one and the most complex one, is maybe is around the area of governance. Um, in terms of the way the Irish education system is organised, while there's a lot of external uh, private education, there's also the Education and Training Board structure. And I know some of you here will be represented on that. And the Education and Training Board are, 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 are 
our government, our, our locally uh, supported, uh, locally engaged, locally managed education structures that manage schools, as you can see on the, on the bottom right there, all the way from community national schools through secondary schools into further education and a whole range of provision. And within the Dublin region, we have two of them. We've got the Dublin and Dunleary Education and Training Board and uh, the City of Dublin Voc Ed Education and Training Board. And these are substantial education bodies. And these are bodies that have a strong governance aspect, and these are bodies which have control over significant elements of it. Now, one question that we might pose is, would it be appropriate to merge these into a single education and training board for a Dublin region, which gives you then a powerhouse of education that w exists within a current legislative framework and also gives a, a specific way to insert a Dublin flavour or a Dublin set of ideas or a Dublin set of priorities into, um, into whatever you, the, the, you wish to do as a mayor. Failing that, because I recognise that might be significant, each of, the, each of the education and training boards already has 12 members of the local authority on them, with, with, with the DDL, ETB, splitting those between the constituent uh, municipalities. So if you had a mayoral structure or an education structure working within this, uh, is it appropriate to think of the mayor having control over this, of these, of these 12 members? Is it appropriate to think of them coordinating it, maybe just being a member, maybe having an influence, maybe having an input? But thinking our way through into what we have already and seeing, is there a way of inserting some sort of municipal or mayoral role within that? Starting where we are and seeing if we can move on beyond that. So, so that structure exists already. If we move to a slightly different area of governance. In primary schools, you, you see that this is the board of uh, management. These are how boards of management are created and, and how, they're, um, how they're populated. And they're relating to patrons and they're relating to parents and to principals. But there are also other members of the board of management. And in a situation where we're seeking to develop a route for a mayoral involvement or influence within education, is it possible to think of perhaps having the extra members who belong to each of the uh, primary school boards or, or a secondary school board being appointed, influenced, coordinated, I, I'm not quite sure what term you wish to use, but to think about that as a way of having a direct influence within education. A second area where I think we might, and I, I'm possibly moving on to previous speakers' area here, is infrastructure. Around schools and schooling and the way we organise it. I have two pictures up there on Griffith Avenue. They, they, these are new cycle lanes, which means my children now cycle to school rather than well, sometimes I cycle to school when they don't get me driving them to school, but basically they're meant to cycle to school. But this is a dramatic change in the way that the school has been positioned within the, universe, within the, within the, uh, within the context, within the local context. So how would a mayor influence and impact and think through issues around infrastructure, around planning, location, services, transport, whatever we wish to think about? So there's a direct rule that wrote root there as well in terms of the ancillary services needed to ha that you need to have around successful school contexts uh, to, to do it in that way. And some of, the, uh, some of the most successful ways that we've seen this around different European countries are the idea of a community education hub, where you try and use the school as, to be the central point of a whole range of community services. So you, you have provision across the entire continuum, from early childhood education, possibly through to further education and higher education. You integrate... Are you surround this with support services around healthcare provision, library provision, sports and leisure provision? And, and this, the education space becomes a, a community centre or a community hub. And that's the type of thing that I think that a, a, a mayoral intervention might be able to manage or might be able to coordinate if we're looking at ways in which they can intervene and coordinate. And you've got this the idea of the nine to nine campus. One of the things that's striking about those of us who work in education is that in many places they shut down quite early and they're extraordinary um, local, uh, local uh, resources, should I say. So the last couple of things then. Um, if we think about education, so, so how can we do this? How can we add on to things in terms of education? But well, one aspect that we might look at is the idea of what can we add in terms of the context of directly elected mayor to what educators do? One thing that emerged strongly during COVID in other parts of the world, particularly in Italy, were the idea of education networks, where local municipalities brought together different stakeholders in an education, school leaders, teachers, students, 
communities and try to address the challenges that were emerging through the COVID pandemic at a municipal level. And they were facilitated, organized, and in sometimes legislatively and legally put in place by, by mayors. And they worked really well. And there's no reason why you couldn't do something like that very quickly. And why the idea of networking couldn't be built into a, 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 a directly elected mayor's particular set of uh, tasks or, or set of competences. Climate and sustainability, uh, Brian spoke about that already, so I don't think there's any reason to do that. But obviously it's a big thing in terms of the way we organise our school context. Um, if we look at economy and skills then, I mean, Dublin is the dominant economic area. It's the Population-wise, it's an economic area. We've got the four highest um, HEIs in the state. So how do we collectively think through, and how could a mayor think through, and how could a mayor establish a structure that allows us to take account of the particular capacities, skills, and competences that exist within this broader region, and, and link the different aspects together? Um, and so we, we do this already, I'm just, I just named the Fingal Skills Strategy as one aspect of how local authorities already do this, but it is important to think that a mayor could possibly think about doing that. And, and the key thing here again is the idea of brokered partnerships, of being very agile and having a capacity within some sort of structure to create relationships, links and opportunities between these different aspects. Um, looking at needs, looking at funding and that type of thing. And I'll finish with this final thing, and maybe it's a slightly bigger thing than what I was asked to think about, but as I talked, I talked through this and talked about this, one of the aspects I was thinking about is the challenge of creating an idea of Dublin and creating an idea of a mayor within Dublin. So how do you create a vision of what it means to belong to Dublin? And there's different ways we can think through that. There's one specific way up there in relation to sports. But what education is really, really good at, at all levels, is talking about ideas around vision, concepts, dreams, thinking through the way in which we identify ourselves, talking through the way in which we think about ourselves, and coming to a collective idea through argument, and maybe sometimes not always agreement, but coming to a relatively collective idea of what it means to be something. So we're talking about being Dubliners. And there, through intervention in curricula, for example, through supports, through a very specific thing, which might be a junior search, uh, short course, or looking at degree programs or sub-degree programs in higher education, has the capacity, I think, to use the education system to think through what it means to be a Dubliner, and perhaps to think through what it means to have a mayor within a Dublin context. So, thank you very much.